What is going on, ladies and germs? This is your old pal, CHH. I thought it would be fun today to look at my bootleg slash homebrew horror Blu-rays. Um, I, I I meant to do this a while back. You know, there was, this was like a hot topic for a minute. And I, I didn't pay attention to a whole lot of it, but there was kind of like back and forth going on. Like, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't really give a damn. There's a lot worse things going on, going on in the world. Uh, but I'm very blessed because one of my dear friends, Kyle has a friend that works on these sort of things. He doesn't run a business or anything. And Kyle doesn't like when I use the word bootleg, so I'm going to use the word homebrew. Because uh, it's not something that's really sold. So he gets he has a buddy that does these sort of things, and he, he sends me some. And uh, some of them are just really, really freaking cool. So um, I want to go over these and show you guys and um, see which ones you guys think are, are the coolest. So we're going to get right get started and uh, this is this is probably my favorite one or one of them. This is a Pumpkinhead three and Pumpkinhead four double feature Blu-ray, and uh, this one came out really cool. So, from what I understand, the way they can get upscaled stuff like this, uh, and it, it's it's, a, it's done in such a good job. I mean, this one looks legitimately real. Obviously, they're Blu-ray R discs. Um, look at the inside of that. You got Pumpkinhead three and four on the inside. The way I the way I, th I I understand that they get these done is they take uh, TV broadcasts of the film and they're able to rip that and um, interestingly enough like I think that that was done a lot and there's some in here that when I ta asked about these you know that's how they're able to get honestly better picture quality on some of these homebrews than you would on say um, the DVD ver like if a movie just came out on DVD. And there's a homebrew Blu-ray of it. It can, in fact, look better if they're able to take a broadcast from television. How they do that, I don't know. But with technology today, I'm sure they can get it pretty easily. So, yeah, this is Pumpkinhead 3 and 4, man. Double feature. Look how cool that is. And if 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 any of these are av available where you can purchase them... Because obviously a lot of the ones I have are movies that aren't available on Blu-ray. Because otherwise, why would I, you need a bootleg? Right, especially if you're in the market and you want to buy a bootleg, you could just if it was legitimately yeah, you'd probably just buy the regular release. I'll talk to Kyle. I have to talk to him about this. If there's some in here that you guys are really interested in and they are available to be purchased, uh, I'll let you know. Otherwise, you know, eBay is obviously and Etsy is obviously a gold mine for all this stuff. Obviously, just go to Etsy and eBay. You, it's a gold mine. There's so many people that do this stuff. So none of these will be impossible to find. But if there is somewhere, I'll talk to Kyle about, about that. So, but anyway, let's move on, guys. This one's really cool. So uh, I did a video the other day talking about Dawn of the Dead and how, you know, we're waiting for America uh, to get a really nice high definition release. The last time we got a Blu-ray release in America was 2007, I think, with Anchor Bay. Uh, and thank you guys for checking that video out. It's got over 10,000 views now. It's just wild. This is really cool. So this is the Dawn of the Dead complete cut. And when Kyle sends me these, he sends them in these wraps. So, uh, so let's look at the back of this. Let me take. I'll take it out of the wrap. So on the Dawn of the Dead complete cut, this is really cool. I like the artwork on that. Imagine getting this as an official release down the road too. Uh, so what is the complete cut? Here's here's a picture of the back, and let's look at the disc real quick. There's the disc artwork. These above and beyond. I'll tell you that. All right, let me read you. What, let me read you what the back says. All right, this disc features the longest edit of this classic zombie film known as the complete cut, which combines all known available film material and previously unreleased audio tracks by Goblin. Presented here for the first time in high definition 1080p with an aspect ratio of 185:1 and a complete runtime of 156 minutes. 156 minutes. And is most likely the nearest any fan is ever going to get to seeing Romero's initial edit of the film. The unauthorized uh, this unauthorized Blu-ray releases a 1-1 copy of the out-of-print XT video Blu-ray. So I, I remember watching this, and Goblin music's all so good. So like, if if I remember, if I heard something that I never heard before, it's not that it, I didn't notice it out of it being bad. It's just everything Goblin does is amazing. So when you just hear their music, it's just so good. But yeah, I remember this is long. I, I watched this and it looked it looked really good. Um, so when it says the longest footage known to man, so I was watching Document of the Dead in parts because that's a really long thing. It looks like George shot an ungodly amount of footage. 
like he had the money and time, more so time. So he just shot an ungodly amount of footage, and he just kept filming footage. So there is still footage probably that will never see the light of day, or at least hasn't yet. But this is what we have that is supposed to be to the closest. So yeah, that is the Dawn of the Dead complete cut. Pretty, pretty, pretty freaking cool. Pretty freaking cool. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue. This is really cool. Uh, who remembers a show called Nightmare Cafe? This is for the people that are uh, two, a generation or two generations before me. A generation before me, if you grew up in the 80s. So Nightmare Cafe, and I watched this, and it really wasn't that bad. I just don't think it caught on, and, this, and the production company, or the TV sh station was like, eh, rating, ratings aren't there, we're going to go ahead and axe it. Uh, Nightmare Cafe, I believe this was written by uh, Wes Craven. Um, here, let me, let me read you the synopsis, because I don't think there's... Uh, for some of you, you may be clicking a bell, like, oh, wait a minute, that sounds so familiar, but you never actually saw it, so... But I'm sure you saw images of it. Let me read this to you. Frank Nolan and Faye Peranovic find themselves in a mysterious all-night cafe following a brush with a death, but they soon learn that they did, in fact, die and have been brought back to life by the cafe. Frank and Faye are given the opportunity to correct something in their lives that went wrong the first time, and upon their success, they stay on as the cafe's new cook and waitress. With the aid of Blackie, the, enig the enigmatic owner of the cafe, Frank and Faye find themselves dispensing hot coffee, daily specials, justice, and second chances to the many imperiled and troubled souls that the cafe is somehow able to attract as it travels from place to place. So yeah, there were... Um, it looks like there were one, two, three, four, there were six episodes, and uh, it looks like a, a, an 80s TV show. Obviously, the picture quality is not stellar, but it, that's, it was an 80s TV show. Uh, but it really wasn't that bad. It was actually kind of charming, but it just didn't catch on, and so it got canceled pretty quick. So let's look at the disc for this. Again, see, this looks high definition probably on the camera, but if you were to look really up close to it, you'll see how pixelated it gets. Uh, again, because it was a TV show, so trying to get just like a, you know, and it's on two discs. So, Nightmare Cafe. Uh, I'd like to see it just not resurrected as a show, but at least brought to a, uh, Tubi, screen box, shutter. Put it on there. Let people, let people check it out. You know, they could knock it out in a few hours watching the show. Uh, it's something they could, they could watch and not be like... Oh, I don't have time to watch all this because that's the beauty of it. <laughs> Even though it didn't survive, it's you could you could watch all of it. So pretty cool little theme too. So I don't know. It's a, it's a shame, but it, it uh, they they tried they tried, but you know it just it didn't it didn't last. Next up, we've got a movie called Phil Tippett's Mad Dog. Now this I gotta finish it, but because I had never heard of it, uh, but this was like this insane stop motion like movie. Follow the assassin through a foreboding world of tortured souls, decrepit bunkers, and wretched monstrosities forged from the most primordial horrors of the subconscious mind. Every set creature and effigy in this macabre masterpiece is handcrafted and painstakingly animated using traditional stop-motion techniques. Mad Dog is a labor of love, a testament to the power of creative grit, and an homage to the timeless art of stop-motion animation. Ready your eyes, ready your spirit, prepare to meet your maker. I watched a little bit of this, and then I had to go somewhere. Something happened with one of my dogs. I remember the day, but I don't remember... What, what I exactly had to do, but I remember just being like floored at how cool this was. So anybody that sees that's seen Mad God, what did I say, Mad Dog? Anybody that's seen Mad God, let me know uh, what you think of it. So pretty cool. I don't know the history behind that at all, if that's lost on physical media or something. Next up, guys, we've got Night of the Demons 3, Demon House. Now, obviously, um, this did, in fact, come out from Scream Factory not too long ago, but I got this well before that Scream Factory release. This is the... Uh, uh, homebrew Demons 3. Pretty cool artwork on there, too. Uh, here's the back. Got that great shot of Angela. You know. Let's see if there's anything about this. Uh, aspect ratio 133. 1. NTSC. Uh, 1080p. Uh, it's an English mono track. Okay, so. Yeah, cool discard on that. I like Demons 3. I think Demons 2 is the best Demons movie. That, when she turns into that snake thing in Demons 2, if you've seen Demons 2, you know. That is a freaking great... It's like one of the best 90s horror movies. Like, really. Like, it's it's crazy how good, to me, Demons 2 is. But, yeah, this is the homebrew of Demons 3, Demons House. 
Yeah, great art on that, too. Next up, guys, we're going to go to some modern stuff. So, uh, it was two years ago that we got uh, the new Hellraiser film. And, you know, why they never put that on a Blu-ray is just asinine. It's Hellraiser. Like, and it wasn't a bad movie, either. I I, I thought it was all right, um, but that's besides the point. My, my point is, I would have gladly owned it, but it never happened. So, my pal uh, hooked me up with this. Hellraiser. I mean, <laughs> these are done so well. Uh, you would think that they're pretty close to being like just legitimate releases. Like they, these company, these people go through all the trouble making little images. They've got Pinhead on the back. Um, special features, multiple cast interviews, World of Flesh and Pleasure, all ten Hellraiser films explored, trailers and more. So that's crazy. They even have special features on this. Uh, I have not been able to watch this yet. Just been busy, but I mean that's so cool. It's just like people would buy these movies so much if they put Hellraiser out. It, it's 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 crazy to me. But yeah, that is uh, Hellraiser, and it even says Hulu up there. So this is a homebrew for Hellraiser. Hopefully, this gets put out. I want to watch this movie again, to be honest with you. Like my thing with this movie was the designs of of all the Cenobites were so sleek and shiny looking. You didn't see like there there wasn't this crude hurt hurtful look to them like in the originals that made it work so much like uh, Butterball had like these glasses that went into the side of his head and his he had no ears and his eyes were bleeding a little bit in the new one these people have these beautiful cuts over their heads and necks but there's not a drop of blood and it's so symmetrical and perfect one of them looks like the McDonald's arches I, I, I remember when I reviewed it I even said this reminds me of the McDonald's arches next up guys we've got a 90's classic or at least Maybe not classic, but I like it. Uh, who remembers Bats, man? Uh, La Bamba's in this. What's his name? Uh, the actor. Lou Diamond Phillips, guys. So, how about Bats? I had a DVD of this, but I was really happy when uh, I got this from my buddy Kyle. Uh, really fun little movie. This has Scream Factory written all over it. Why they haven't put out Bats, I don't know. Uh, really great little movie. So... Uh, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. There you go. So, yeah, great little, great little film. Bats is awesome, and, and who doesn't love the great Lou Diamond Phillips, ladies and germs? So, yeah, pretty cool. There's Bats. Next up, this is one of my favorite things he sent me, the Stephen King's Night Shift Collection. Look at that. It's got the woman in the room and the boogeyman on the back. Let's have a look at this, guys. So here's the back of it. Let me read these two to you. In a darkly lit, eerily quiet hospital room, an elderly woman lies in the painful grip of a terminal disease. Her devoted son, a lawyer named Johnny, suffers too. When he finds himself too cowardly to perform the one act that could deliver his mother from her torment, but after a disturbing talk with one of his death row convict clients, Johnny comes to a shocking final decision. And then there was the boogeyman, which I really liked on here. Lester Billings had always been a loving father and husband, but when his three young children began having hysterics over a boogeyman in the bedroom closet, there was just one thing to do. Make them face their childish fears. Unfortunately for all involved, Lester is about to learn that some childhood fantasies are best left where they belong, in the dark. Very cool. Yeah, so Stephen King's Night Shift. Again, I don't know if this has any sort of legitimate release or not. I would assume not. Uh, but yeah, very cool. All right, we got some home run hitters. I'm going to show you guys. I saved my favorite two uh, home brews. I got you, Kyle. I'm not going to call them bootlegs. I got my favorite two home brews for last. Uh, next up, guys, we talked about this on my Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies on high definition. Here is a home brew of the uh, 2022 film. Uh, cast and crew interviews and stuff is on there. Again, they do a good job with the uh, artwork and stuff on that. There's the disc. We got some artwork on the inside. Put this out on Blu-ray. Even the people that hate it, they'll end up going to buy it because they just want to have every Texas Chainsaw Massacre on physical media. So, very, very cool. Next up, we've got a couple releases of Nightbreed. We've got the Cabal Cut. And we've also got the Super Cabal Cut. The Ultimate Cabal Cut. So, the Cabal Cut, people probably know about the Cabal Cut. And that's great artwork on there. So, and there's a lot of special features on here, too. Mark Allen, Russell Sherrington, Jimmy, Jam Jimmy Johnson, the editors, 
all that stuff. There's uh, interviews with people from Fright Fest 2012. Yeah, so really cool release. And then this is, like I said, the ultimate Cabal Cut. And this is what I wanted to read because I, I left Kyle's note on here when he sent me this. All right. This is not the same as the regular Cabal Cut. This is the ultimate Cabal Cut. Read the back of the case carefully and be prepared to sit for a while as it's truly the ultimate fan cut of the Cabal Cut. And I did, and it's super long. Um, but let me read this to you. The intention of the Cabal Cut is to allow fans to experience the most complete version of Nightbreed as well as to honor the beautiful work by the artists who made the film by showing much of their creation in their complete form as possible. In order to present the most complete cut, different sound and video sources have been used. And, th and though in high definition from 99% of its 198-minute runtime, approximately 132 seconds of the footage is sourced from low-quality VHS work prints and dailies, which were not restorable. It also includes the important character building scene for which no sound elements were available. So in order to include this into the cut, subtitles have been created in the absence of recording dialogue. The Cabal Cut has evolved over time since its creation in 2012, and each variant has become more and more complete. To bring us this to this, the ultimate cabal cut of nightbreed yeah and it's it was an interesting watch very long but there it's crazy when you watch something like this that has all this foot it was kind of like seeing that cut of uh hellraiser uh, hellraiser 4 yeah when they put that uh, initial cut on that movie so very very cool i just realized i gotta grab my hollow my nightmare on elm street 5 blu-ray so let me go grab that all right guys so i'm back here is my A Nightmare on Elm Street 5 homebrew. Now, I remember telling Kyle at the time, because he was just starting to hook me up with some of these, and I was like, dude, you've got to see if you can get Homeboy to make me a Part 5 uncut Blu-ray. And he did. And uh, I love this. And it even made it to my specs, which is very, very kind of him. I was like, dude, I'm not trying to be picky, but throw that VHS... Po po artwork on there specifically the poster which i have you know i have the uh i have the poster for part five the uh home video poster so there it is here's the back of it and uh so this was taken from the laser disc and upscaled 720p right since that the laser disc was the highest format that had and i have the laser disc myself that's the highest format that has um you know the uh, uh whatchamacallit the movie so what's cool about this is that he has the dvd and blu-ray of this and he put on the special features all the promotional video stuff that was done for part five stuff that you can kind of find on youtube you got to dig for it because it's such kind of like hidden gem stuff it's all on here this is it, like this is kind of like the ultimate release of dream child in my hands right now because it's it's the upscaled you know, good looking release of part five. And it has so much bonus material he got of like promotional stuff from the time. So this is amazing. I love that. And I have multiple releases of Freddy's Nightmares homebrews. Uh, I've got this release, which is a chunky box. And it's got the original Elm Street on the front. In, in true bootleg fashion, here's the show again with the remake Freddy on the front. Which I think is actually brilliant because, like, there's, like, this um, bootleg market that, like, I remember seeing these bootlegs, like, when I was a, when I was a kid, right, right before Katrina hit. We used to see, I, I used to, I used to go to the Saints games, and we would drive through the Ninth Ward, and I remember seeing some guys out on some of the corners, like, DVDs for sale, and it would be bootleg DVDs, and... I remember seeing some out of the car window one time, and it would be like Top Gun with a picture of Mel Gibson on the front, like stuff like that. It was hysterical. I loved it. So like this reminds me of my childhood, seeing that kind of stuff. So yeah. And then this one, which actually has like the VHS artwork on it, the best of Freddy's Nightmares, uh, which even though it says the best of, it's 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 every episode on on this. And so a lot of them are on multiple discs. You know, there's an example of one. Um. Moving on, guys, we've got David Cronenberg's Spider. Again, I left a note on this one. Uh, I didn't love this movie, but I love the actor in this movie. It's the guy from Red Dragon. Uh, but let me read this to you. Um, Kyle wrote me this note. He goes, so being a fellow Cronenberg fan looking through his filmography, this movie from 05, Spider is only out on VHS and DVD. There is no Blu-ray or HD streaming copy anywhere. 
So uh, I had my guy do a nice custom upscale of the DVD to a crisp 1080p image, which it did look good, I gotta say, that I think you will enjoy. The movie itself is a very good character piece and one that deserves a Blu-ray with special features, and I really don't understand why it's forgotten in joy. So yeah, and again, you know, like, with Cronenberg stuff, like I said, I, I didn't love this movie, but with Cronenberg stuff, like Crimes of the Future, by the third time I watched it, I was like, you know what, this movie really is pretty wild to watch. But that's the thing, even when I say I don't like stuff from Cronenberg, or if I'm not in love with something from even uh, his kids' movies, I'll think about them. Until eventually it's where I need to rewatch it. It's actually a, a remarkable thing. But that being said, I still don't like Crash. Next up, guys, this is really cool. This is probably one of my favorite bootlegs, excuse me, homebrews, that he sent me. Uh, the theatrical cut reconstruction of Return of the Living Dead. And the green case was such a nice touch. I love it. So you're probably asking yourself, well, what is this? <laughs> let, me, let me explain to you what it says in the back, because this was news to me, the theatrical cut. Um, it is a fan, uh, it's a fan edition, basically. It's the restored original soundtrack. So it's got all the songs from the soundtrack on it, including one song. <sighs> what band was it? I always draw a blank. I like the song. It's on the, I believe it's on the vinyl soundtrack. But even even when they put the music on the like the 4K and Blu-ray, they, they were they were missing one song from the soundtrack they couldn't license. But uh, they it's in here, is what I'm saying. Like all the original soundtrack that was placed in the film when it was released theatrically, it's on here. It also has the original uh, uh, Orion logo on the intro too, and on on the end credits. So nice touch. I like that. Uh, it's 185.1 2K scan of the inner positive 35mm negative. Uh, it's got the uh, the image laser disc audio. Uh, excuse me, the, the audio is the image laser disc mono LPCM2, and it also has the second sights mono LPCM2 from 2012. It's got trailers, TV spots, and 35mm open matte 2K film scan. So this was really fun to watch. I mean, it really felt old school. And I love mono soundtracks. Like, they're so robust. And for sound bars, I think they're perfectly fine. So this is really cool to watch. And it's got Tarman when he's doing the brains. Like, his voice is higher. Because they deepened it in the releases afterwards. Like, it's like, more brains. But in that one, it's more brains. Like, he's higher. All right, and these are my two favorite homebrews of all time. So some of my favorite videos I've ever done. And there's a few I want to do, like... uh the bar I called it the bargain bin living dead films and I did I was really proud of these videos I started off doing a retrospective on children of living dead but it wasn't really just talking about why the this is a bad movie I wanted to know what happened because no movie intends to just be bad at least not at least at least not all of them right this movie was not intended to be bad but when you learn what happens where I think it was Joe Wolf's daughter was going to direct the movie and she vetoed everything that Joe Russo, John Russo was going to do because he was involved with it, blah, blah, blah. It just went to hell in a handbasket. And the same thing, the same exact thing happened. But guys, if you haven't seen these videos, just type in Planet CHH, Return of Living Dead Necropolis, Return of Living Dead Raid to the Grave, and watch those videos I did because I broke down the entire story. The Let me just grab these so I can show you so I'll shut up about it, but... These are my two favorite homebrews of all time, Necropolis and Rave to the Grave. And they look so much better than the DVDs. I have them somewhere. Um, here's one of them. Like here is my DVD for Necropolis. I got it from a Hollywood video. Uh, this looks so much better. And I, this is where I learned how is this possible? Like usually I've seen stuff that was upscaled. Sometimes I don't notice any difference. But with these, I noticed the difference. And the reason is, these were taken from the TV broadcast. So this one is a 720p, and this one's a 1080p. And um, I don't know if they have any bonus features. I don't think so. But the menu screens on these are really cool, too. They did a, he did a good job on these. But I can't hate these movies. As a matter of fact, I think Rave to the Grave is, in fact, the better bargain bin living dead film uh but the stories on these were remarkable what happened and I, I really urge you guys to check those videos out if i'm if i'm get off my lazy ass i'll i'll put them in the pinned comment so you can get to them easier but 
yeah, these are my two favorite ones because he. I think by me doing those videos, Kyle went out of his way to try to get these for me because he saw I had a passion for the history of the Return of the Living Dead movies. So I think that actually spawned me getting these from him, if memory serves. Uh, and if you haven't seen this movie, let this image just kind of ring throughout your head. That is a zombie from Return of the Living Dead Necropolis. Look at that. So yeah, guys, those are my homebrew horror Blu-rays. Um... I ain't got a problem with homebrew skill. I really don't, you know. It, 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 especially like, especially like, if it's stuff that's not available, it's just like, okay, You're like we want to own this stuff on physical media, right? And I think if if any of this stuff comes out legitimately that I don't already own, I'll be more than happy to get it because it's like it's like okay, thank you for validating this movie by putting it out and knowing like there's a market. Like yes, thank you. But sometimes when it's not available. It's like uh, the fans put things into their own hands. So there it is, guys. Let me know your favorite release that you have. If you have any questions, like I said, drop it below. I, I can t I talk to Kyle all the time. We have our, each other's numbers. So if I can get any information and all that, I will. But if I, I can't guarantee any of the ones you I saw are for sale. But listen, go on eBay or Etsy. Literally, they're all over the place. Literally all over the freaking place. So. There you go, guys. Thank you for watching. This is your pal CHH. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time. Huge, giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind-the-scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.